You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 1st, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we anxiously await President Stupid's dumpster fireside chat. It's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal. And now I owe myself $5. Dumpster fire owes Drift Glass some money because he coined that phrase, politically you know, speaking. You hear that, Merriam Webster? You hear that? Well, yeah. You were anyway. the first person to say that online, oh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, no, I have it in a post from 2006, I think, 2005 or uh-huh, something. About uh-huh. David Brooks, I believe. So, you know. Goodness gracious. Shocking. I know. Well, we have a couple of housekeeping things to mention yeah. uh, at the top of the show. First of all, Drift Glass, happy belated birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you. The 30th of October is Drift Class's birthday. And then, you know, the Halloween candy arrives the next day. Mm-hmm. And we had snow here in Illinois uh, on your birthday. We Drift did. Class. And so these poor trick-or-treaters were real troopers. They came out. Oh, please. They did, and they got, they got their candy. The candy. And my they parents got, the got off cheap, let me tell you, for years. <laughs> just, oh, yeah, no, this is a big old costume party is for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother was jealous, but I thought. I was the cat's pee jump. And so uh, we've got some other uh, housekeeping items. Do you want to go ahead and cover those, Drift Glass? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I would appreciate all your positive energy directed towards my hippie mom, Drift Glass's mom, Shirley, who is in very poor health and failing health. Um, I'm going to probably just unplug my microphone at the end of this podcast, get on a plane, fly far away, uh, because she needs me and my brother and my sister by her bedside now. So that's where I'll be going. Um, and I would appreciate very much if if you're an atheist, then shoot me some of your positive vibes. And if you're not, shoot me your thoughts and prayers. Um, as with all things having to do with faith, it's like chicken soup. It couldn't <laughs> help, but it couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt. So That's right. Uh, second item, uh, Tammy, our angel nerd, really needs your help. This will cost you absolutely nothing, but it will require you do something. Um, please play the YouTube video at Mayday, one word, dot proleftpod.com. She's not asking you to pay attention to it or to read it or to comment on it. She's just asking you that you play it all the way through and help her get her hit count up. It has to do with a water issue in her building. It has to do with a, a jackass landlord. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't, you really don't have to get involved in the details of it. No. Just watch, put the video on a tab and silence yeah. it and watch it to the end so that she gets... Uh, high hit count on it, and she can take that to the landlord company and say, look, people are paying attention to you. Uh, you're being a jerk, and you need to stop it. Yeah. And uh, she's trying to get publicity for the fact that her landlord is being a jerk. So, And I, I like to say that never let it be said I won't do the least I can do. <laughs> <laughs> never Literally, let it be said. The least you can do. So, Yeah, and Tammy's not looking Tammy's done so much for us and she's not looking for donations or anything about this, really. Play the she tape. wants people to watch mayday.proleftpod.com. There's a YouTube video there. Yeah. Silence it, play it all the way through and you're done. That's all. So, we appreciate that. Eye. If you don't know who she is, she built our website. She built she did a lot. She's done a lot. She's social medias for us. She, right. Um, fundraising stuff yeah. and yeah she's remarkable and uh we love her and so like you said it is absolutely the least we can do to say something about- i will say a uh, funny story true story middle child was looking at our amazon rating no she was looking at our itunes reviews right, like I'm sorry. apple I'm sorry. podcast reviews yes. yes and she said holy shit people like you <laughs> Yeah, and she kept she started reading reviews on Apple of yeah. our podcast. The worst ones, yeah. <laughs> the worst ones. Someone said if it was just Blue Gal on the podcast, I'd listen to it. Right, <laughs> right. Which was great. She was a hoot at your birthday party. She was the whole time. I don't know what was get, got into her, but she was just she read all of these reviews. And then she wanted, she, I don't know whether she was doing a scavenger hunt or a puzzle. She wanted to know out of the blue, yeah. which sexually transmitted disease begins with the letter T. 
that we're all gathered around Walt Wilson, a heart woman. This is at the birthday. dining room table. <laughs> I, have a, I have a mouthful of birthday cake. She goes, oh, <laughs> by the way, what's that STD that starts with a T? <laughs> and and but, then you know she what? found it. And yeah. she said, oh, wait, it's not a disease. It's it's a, what did she say? Parasite. Or a... Parasite. <laughs> it's mostly transmitted between ladies. Between so. ladies and it'll contact. <laughs> Between women, oh, very, very typical dinner table conversation. <laughs> Regular ordinary day at Casa DGBG. Yeah, I don't know what she was doing on her phone. It was like, was it trivia crack or something? A, a memorable celebration. It was. It goes down in the books as definitely a birthday. <laughs> I was there. I remember. Lord. Uh, hey, blue gal, I've got a question. Yeah. Do you remember when the Terminator premiered? 1984, I think, thereabouts, and the entire Beltway media stormed out angrily and wrote a thousand indignant op-eds because Sarah Connor failed to reach across the aisle and offer a bipartisan compromise that was acceptable to the cyborg sent for the future to murder her. Do you remember that? Remember when that happened? No. No, neither do I. (laughs) Because that's where we're at with impeachment now. We are now deep in impeachment land, and right now the New York Times is doing what it does, which is writing... Uh, one gentleman there just wringing his hands and talking about the need for how both sides, it's so partisan, isn't it a shame? David Brooks did a, did a um, thought experiment. Something like, okay, granted, Donald Trump committed all these impeachable offenses, and we need to impeach him as fast as possible so we can get back to normal. But progressives, but libs, riddle me this. If, if Joe Biden were up on the Truman balcony with a machine gun offing tourists, you'd defend him, wouldn't you? Be honest. Be honest. You know you would. Well, check and mate, liberals. Check and mate. (laughs) And Mark Levin lost his mind. Uh, They played it on Hannity last night. I don't know whether he was on Hannity or they played a clip of him on Hannity from his Blaze TV show. But he literally made the argument that by running for president, Joe Biden is interfering with the 2020 election. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I gotta say, I gotta say, first by a nose was Tucker Carlson. Oh, my God. Who lost his entire mind on Fox News by first declaring that Adam Schiff loved impeachment as and, and stalked impeachment as if it were a young Jodie Foster. Yep. That is a direct reference to the taxi driver where the uh, protagonist of the movie uh, falls for young Jodie Foster and and shoots a presidential candidate to prove his true love for her. So that's that's Tucker Carlson's brain right now. That's what he thinks well, of anyone. And let's be clear. Tucker Carlson's show is scripted. Yes. He wrote that down before down. he said it. That's that wasn't just it. him trying to fly off the handle no. and come up with some crazy attention-grabbing analogy. He and thought about that. And then stretching it out to... Uh, Adam Schiff keeps pictures of impeachment on his bedroom wall. And Adam Schiff writes letters, love letters to impeachment with his own body fluid. He is, he said this on television. Yes, he did. Tucker this Carlson time, did. This is what crazy Uncle Liberty has shit into his head every night, which is why you cannot reason with Republicans anymore, which is why anyone who comes on, like, let's say, Charlie Sykes in USA Today, who has a column in USA Today for reasons I don't understand, who said, you know, If we don't impeach Donald Trump, the Republican Party risks the values that made our party great. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what? Donald Trump is the value that made your party great. He's racist. He's ignorant. He's loud. He's fact diverse. That's your fucking party. That's the party you built. That's who you are. And it's way too late for you to scuttle down the rat lines and pretend you had nothing to do with it because we're not going to stand for it. We've talked about this a couple of podcasts ago where the mainstream media wants to talk desperately about how far to the left Democrats are moving, yeah. constantly moving so way too far to the left. So bad. And not mentioning how far to the right Republicans have yeah. moved in the past 30 years, mm-hmm. 30 years of this. And the partisanship that you're seeing in the impeachment vote is not Democratic partisanship. No. This is a inquiry that we're voting for. Right. Not you know, and this is something that when it was Nixon, Republicans voted for the inquiry. Let, yes, let's do a fact finding to see what has happened. That's what we're doing. Let's find out. What and here comes. Out. Yeah, let's find out. And uh, after a week of Republicans, more than a week of Republicans screaming about this being behind closed doors and it's 
all uh rigged. you know soviet style right he's on trial in the house etc all of it a lie uh we get to the point of a vote okay now we're going to do it all in front of cameras right. and let's go every republican votes no right right and now it's the democrats fault because it's already tainted blue gal the process it's tainted, tainted because it's because it's down on a party line vote with two democrats who are in cons- very conservative districts voting with republicans to to try to pretend that they're not against Donald Trump in any personal way. Uh, that's what Republicans figured out decades ago, which is if we just all stick together, if we and scream just all the scream same thing, same voice at the same time and demand crazy shit. Um, the fact that we all stick together and are willing to sink this country, willing to wreck this country rather than give the Democrats one fucking thing, the press will Will cut, will will cry and rend their garments and bitch about the the partisanship of it all. You remember mm-hmm. in 2016 when I'm sure I have most of the details of this right. The Southern Avenger, remember the Southern, yeah. Southern <laughs> Avenger, straight up racist, a straight straight up Klansman, white supremacist, racist, wore um, a Confederate flag on his face. All right, hired by the Trump campaign. Now the t- the two stories that emerged from this was. Republicans hire a white supremacist to work on the Trump campaign. And Democrats say, holy shit, Republicans just hired a white supremacist to work on the on their campaign. And Chuck Todd fell down weeping and said, oh, my God, both sides race for the bottom. Both sides race to the bottom. I just figured this out decades ago that they can that the, 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 the mainstream media is so fucking spineless, so terrified of losing their job by pointing out the Republican Party is toxic and wrecking this country, that they will do anything to avoid saying it. This is why David Brooks has a job. He's had a job right in the same stupid column for 16 years. The mainstream media is so terrified of actually pointing out that one side is wrong, that by part that partisanship has become the ultimate dirty word. And we say, you know what? Three cheers for partisanship. <laughs> and I think I think we're seeing that in terms of the booing at the World Series and the really immediate pushback to all of this Venman yep. uh, attacks on Venman's patriotism. Yep. There was a, a viral pushback on that to stop it. And it succeeded in stopping that nonsense. Even Liz Cheney came out and said, we don't need to do this. She wants to still have a career in 2026. Yeah. <laughs> That's her problem. Um, well, as a Republican, I, I, it's remarkable. And speaking of the World Series, let me just mention that after Donald Trump was booed at Game 5 of the World Series and the crowd yeah. chatted lock him up, we immediately got the sorrowful lecture from Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski about civility and about, you know, we're, this is not American. This is not what America Respect do. the office, just, really. And, yeah. And you just want to please... For fuck's sake, put someone on the panel, someone who isn't one of his one of his footstools to say, are you out of your fucking mind? Really? Are, this is how pathetic you've gotten. They pay you eight, 17 million dollars a year to sit on this network and say shit like this. Look, the lunatic fascists on the right were chanting to lock up Hillary Clinton with no due process at all, with nothing. For real. For real. For real. For real. And he was leading them and they were smirking about it for no fucking reason. Donald Trump is an out and proud criminal who's a traitor, who has betrayed this country. And the fact that we would like him locked up is the natural and normal reaction of anyone reacting to anybody who is this out of his fucking mind and this dangerous. Well, and let's face it too. They, they were making fun of the RNC by doing that, by chanting, lock him up. They weren't saying don't have a trial. They weren't accusing him of things he hasn't done on camera. Well, let's have a due process where we depose witnesses. Doesn't really work in a, in a fifth game of the world series setting. (laughs) Taking their own chant and throwing it back in their face because you actually did elect a criminal and you are actually standing with a criminal and you are actually supporting an out and proud traitor is utterly effective and very American. And the thing is, Joe Scarborough, that doesn't understand that that's American. Joe Scarborough doesn't live in America. Mika Brzezinski doesn't live in America. They live in Washington. They live in a beltway. They live in a bubble. And these people have no idea what's going on outside their bubble. They're just terrified of saying anything that might turn into someone holding it against them as being partisan because the worst thing can possibly be in america is partisan well you know what they're just issues like at this point in our history all of them 
where one side is completely and utterly wrong about pretty much everything and one side isn't. And if your stance is anytime a Republican says something atrocious, well, that's bad. Anytime a Democrat says, hey, that's wrong. Well, that's partisanship. And we don't even know what to do with that. Then the media is might as well just pack it up and go home. There is no media anymore. Because if you're not reporting facts, if you're not reporting reality, then what are you doing? Well, you're jerking off a bunch of rich, white, pampered idiots who are terrified of believing that the Republican Party has lost its mind. That's all you're doing. You're selling them fairy tales. And the reason we got Trump, the big reason we got Trump is that you've been selling, you people in the mainstream media have been selling this bullshit fairy tale, this both siderism for 20 fucking years now. And now we're here. Now we've arrived at the place liberals always said we would arrive. And this is where, and this is where we're, I'm done. I'm just done with this. As I wrote this week, when Jeff Zucker closes Lewandowski, he opens a Duffy. Jeff Zucker, the uh, president of uh, CNN, finally got rid of uh, buzz cut thug uh, Republican stooge and, and Donald Trump acolyte, uh, Corey Lewandowski, uh, which he hired precisely because he was all of those terrible things, and then turned right around and hired someone just like him to put on the air. Because CNN is not news, CNN is a puppet show. And you need someone to fill the seat of the crazy person who says what Donald Trump wants him to say. That's because Jeff Zucker wants his network to be that way. The reason that that Joe Scarborough has a job is because the people who run MSNBC want him that way. The reason that Chuck Todd has a job is because the, the people who run MSN, or NBC and Comcast want it that way. And I want to get I want to take a moment and get away from the personalities involved to getting to the issue, some of the issues involved, like, for instance, Please. healthcare. Because yes. it became really clear this week that the arguments against Medicare for all and the arguments of how you're going to pay for it, how you're going to pay for it, no one is asking actually how you're going to pay for it. What they really want is don't touch my stocks. Don't touch my pharma right. stocks. Don't touch my health insurance stocks. Right. And this mm -hmm. is this is not about health care for everybody. It's not about uh, budget deficits. This is about Wall Street. And uh, Elizabeth Warren, to her credit, has come out with this whole plan. She's got, I, I went and counted the words. It's over 2,600 words in this essay and a calculator showing how much you will personally save in uh, premiums and copays and so forth. I'm not exactly sure that her calculator is 100% accurate because under yeah. Medicare, you do pay some copays. Um, some people pay copays. You pay additional for Medicare Advantage, et cetera. Some of this is going to have to be worked out in the Congress. But um, to make the argument that somehow it's okay for uh, me and my rich friends to have health insurance and you and your poor friends not to have health insurance because it's a market is a Wall Street argument. That is the argument Wall Street is making. Right. Um, and let's face it, Joe Scarborough is there, not just because MSNBC wants him there, but MSNBC is catering to a Wall Street, New York City, Manhattan, Washington, D.C. audience yeah. that wants to hear the market stable for your pharma stocks. So um, that's why he has the, the panels that he does, the white guy panels that he does. That's why Mika is an ornament on that show. Mm -hmm. uh, so and and I also wanted to say that uh, Brianna Brianna Kellar, I think her name is, um, she's one of the uh, on-air talent at uh, CNN. She actually called out Duffy, and yeah. and and said, "Look, Sean Duffy, reality TV star for Real World and Real World Road Service or whatever it is, he is questioning the loyalty of a Purple Heart recipient." Right. who came to this country as a child orphan. It was it was good to see right there in under the same roof from CNN someone actually called that out. And and that's what I mean by that. I think we've reached a tipping point with some people that uh enough is enough. And I want to thank you Drift Class for a very nice post you wrote about no labels this week. Oh sure. Well, <laughs> I, I got to say this is where I will respectfully agree with you, enthusiastically agree with you about my post cuz it was very well written. <laughs> Uh, I must disagree, however, about Sean Duffy. Um, it's it's a reality show. 
They need oh, yeah. a, an Alan Combs for, for her to yell at. So they, they hire a doof to go on the air to say stupid shit that people can get outraged about. If they didn't want an asshole on the air, they wouldn't have hired him. They knew who he was. They know who these they, they know who all these people are. They are trying to balance something, and the balance between truth and fiction is what they're getting. So I assume there's a vetting process. He goes to HR. They give him a lanyard. I mean, there's a whole hiring process that goes on there, and they knew perfectly well who they were hiring. And they put him on television to say insane shit so that the, that the anchor can yell at him and wag a finger at him. I think I've used this analogy before, but bear with me if you if you don't mind. There was a uh, London department store, I believe, in the 1940s or 50s. Uh, that kept a guy in the basement who wore a bow tie, a little sweaty, nerdy guy in the basement who wore a bow tie. And every time a, a, a very high end department store, a, a very elegant department store. And when, when a very uh, a stately lady would come in and have some bad service, the manager would take her to the basement or call this guy up and yell at him in front of her and say, this is the guy who screwed up. We're going to make it right. You, sir, are fired and you'll never work in this business again. And the, and the sweaty little man in the bow tie would cry and cry and sweat and sweat and plead and plead. And they'd fire him and he'd go back to the basement. <laughs> and they'd drag him out again when they needed someone to fire. Sean Duffy's a prop. Everyone on these shows is a prop. They're there for entertainment value. If they were there for news value at all, they wouldn't have put him on in the first place. That was a very nice post you wrote, Drift Class, on your birthday about no labels. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you about the quality of my writing, Blue Gal. I think it would be stupid of me. Um yeah, I, I uh, first of all, my wife knows how to tell a story. Uh, you start with laughter heard from a distant room. <laughs> What's going on? This is the middle of a workday. Yeah, day. I started cracking up yeah. really loudly. I, I do laugh loud my, sometimes. My wife has the and... most beautiful laugh I've heard. And Oh, well, I, I it was about no labels. Yes. I, Came across an article and I laughed very, very hard. And then Drift Glass said, oh, oh, oh. what's going on? And, and rather than tell me, because that would be cheating, um, <laughs> my wife came. I sent you the link she, well, that made me laugh. She, she came to my room and said, guess, you'll never guess who's hosting an undecided voter gathering in New Hampshire next week. <laughs> and uh, as I wrote, uh, for the record, this is exactly the sort of question that zooms around our house at all hours of the day and night. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. You were right. I never would have guessed. No. It was no labels. No. Oh my God, no labels is hosting the gathering of undecided voters in, in New Hampshire. Isn't that great? And and if you get a chance, you really ought to go back and look at SNL's commercial about undecided voters. Yeah. yeah. It it is hilarious. Well, um, and, and and I understand in a democratic primary there can be undecided sure. voters who are reality based. Of course. But uh Going to a no labels event to try to make up your mind yes. <laughs> about who to vote for when it's uh, Marianne Williamson, Bill Weld, yeah. and uh, some white random white guy who's somehow still in the race. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, and a fourth you person. Thought it, you thought it was uh, Tim Ryan. I said, no, he's pulled out. It was somebody else. Right. And I couldn't remember the name. Well, so, I, And uh, for, for uh, context, the no labels on my people go way, way back. Um no, they they hung out their yeah. shingle in 2010 and five minutes later wrote a post about it um, yep. because this was clearly one of those boutique uh, patent oil medicine bullshit. Both sides do it. Billionaire funded. Oh, yeah. Well, it was yeah. it was. Um, and who was on the original board? It was like it was Charlie Crist and David from Joe Lieberman and Mark McKinnon and Joe Lieberman and Joe Scarborough and David fucking Brooks. And it was 2010. So everyone was just breathless over the fact that. You know, both sides are so bad and we need a third way. And what we need to do is not call anything by a name of any kind, whether it's good or bad or like right or Republican. wrong. Republican. <laughs> just, just let's all agree that labels are bad. Not the poison mm -hmm. under the label. Just the labels themselves are bad. And uh, then my wife continued to read because it's the problem solver co uh, convention. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the problem solver I love caucus. the problem yep. solver convention because there's so many problems. Right. And and we want to solve them. <laughs> um and it was uh, the nationally renowned names they brought to this conference were Frank Luntz and Joe mm -hmm. Lieberman. And I went, oh, really? Frank Luntz and Joe Lieberman together on fucking it is, stage? Is it my birthday? Oh my yes, it, it is. It is my birthday. How does it get better? How does it possibly get better? Well, <laughs> I guessed um, I couldn't figure out who the second and third people were because I couldn't figure out which nondescript white guy was still in and which was out. 
And then no, and and these guys, there's there's a a level of them all polling yes. at one percent, and and yeah. turns out it was one of them was John uh, Delaney, uh, which John which, Delaney, that's and, it, because Hickenlooper's right, dropped and, out, and Tim Ryan's job dropped out, and what's left but John, John Delaney. And this reminded yeah. me for the first time in weeks that a John Delaney exists, and b <laughs> John Delaney is not John Mulaney, who is very actually funny and not running for any office yes. that we know of. But this was such a beautiful, beautiful gift. It allowed me to go through my archives and look up Sam Stein's. Remember who oh, funded yeah. No oh Labels? God. That was it's really It's a bunch fun. of private yeah. equity assholes. And I, and, private yeah, equity And assholes. hedge fund managers, <laughs> all of whom want to be told the same fairy tale about how there's a reasonable right. center and it's the extremes on both sides. And don't touch my stuff. And going down the <laughs> list of people who and, and the companies they run and the quarter million dollar, half million dollar, 300,000 checks they write to this organization. Just and that's just sofa cushion money for them. I did have to sit for a minute and go, yeah. you know what? If even one of these douchebags wrote me and you one of these checks, just the, the money they piss away on this boondoggle every year, one person writing one check, financially, we'd be set for a number of years. Years we could live on what Joe Lieberman makes yeah. off of no labels. And, and yeah, so it's the years. and it's such a toxic, yeah. shitty, dumb idea. And every year it's a dumb idea. And I, I I checked out all of the things that the uh, Problem Solver Caucus has solved. Uh, none. <laughs> They've solved no problem. <laughs> Nothing has been improved. In the last uh, nine years, things have only gotten worse. And, of course, the people who are clinging to this fake center um, boutique bullshit fairy tale. No. The only, the only way I would commend a Problem so- Solver Caucus mm-hmm. Republican – is if he is primarying a Tea Party Republican. Yes, yes, I will. In I will order vote to him. say no, I will actually vote on a Democratic sponsored bill, and I will actually try to bring some funding home for roads and bridges and sure. rural hospitals in my district, rather than say government's evil, government's bad. We will try to actually do something for this district, and in red districts where it's gerrymandered beyond the ability of any Democrat to win, in a problem solver. Republican is better than a That's Tea true. Party Republican. On the other hand, it's so, all bullshit. And, and there's a punchline <laughs> right? to this, and I will now I'll now, now bring you the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> um, the article uh, is just just a very celebratory of the amazing accomplishments or theoretical accomplishments that someday mm-hmm. might actually happen. It inspired the creation of the first of its kind House Problem Solvers Caucus, which features 48 members evenly divided between the parties working to forge solutions. And I wrote, you know what? They couldn't forge a butter knife out of a slightly larger butter knife if they took a thousand problem solver caucus blacksmiths on the case for a thousand years. But the real punchline, here's the real punchline. In 2016, they didn't they have never solved any problems at all. But in 2016, they did throw a, a quote, lavish banquet that cost a million dollars, at which they did give an award for taking their problem solver promise to one Donald J. fucking Trump. Holy That's shit. Who, this is the organization that hedge fund managers and private equity assholes just dump money into. And he took he took the problem solver pledge, didn't he? He took the problem solver pledge. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz he's not a politician. That's no. what I like about him. Well, he's not a politician. And that sort of leads me to yeah. this New Yorker uh New York Magazine article. You mind if I, I go there just for a okay. minute? As much as we don't like talking about money, and about us, you know, we fundraise at the end here and we're going to do that today. But generally speaking, there is an enormous amount of money out there floating around, uh, stupid money that people will throw at almost anything except progressive activism. They will spend it on mm-hmm. anything except progressive activism. And there's a column out there in New York Magazine uh, yesterday or today that confirms pretty much what we know about state level supporting. I'm going to read a paragraph or two from the article now. Republicans have cannily used state governments as laboratories for radical policies. When state Democratic parties are weak, they can't block assaults on abortion rights or voting rights or collective bargaining rights. They can't serve as talent incubators for future members of Congress, and that in turn weakens the National Party. How did we get here? Journalist Megan Winter poses the question early in her new book, All Politics is Local. The answer she suggests is multi-pronged. State houses are missing progressive and even centrist lawmakers, she writes, quote, because of choices not made, money not spent, organizations not sustained, would-be leaders never elected. One thing that the author heard over and over again when she was doing her research from longtime progressive organizers 
is that they have had a lot of trouble getting big donors or institutional donors to sustain long-term organization at the state and local level. So on the left, there is just not the money to sustain a 10 or 20 year program the way there is on the right. And there's, this is the poll quote that, that really just jumped out at me. The left is largely guided by the moral whims of rich people, whereas the right is guided by rational business decisions. Absolutely true. And they invested yeah. in let's get yep. the courts so that they do not right. regulate polluters, so that they will never allow for uh, reasonable election laws, so that we will always win. And yeah. for every million they throw in the pot, they get tens of millions back. It's a straight up transaction. I'm buying politicians who will deregulate my industry, who will cut my taxes, et cetera. That's it. Progressives yeah. have to make the case that health care for poor people is good. How are you going to pay for it? Mexico is going to pay for it. Yeah. And the first thing out of the, the mouths of donors is, well, who's going to pay for that? Yeah, well, you, you are, fucker, but yeah, no one wants, no to, one say wants that. to say that. Right. So when you are thinking in your own home about problems that you're facing and, and things that you're dealing with and why are things the way they are, it really is helpful to think in almost science fiction terms of the scale of money that goes on in politics every day. Yep. The scale of money being thrown at dumb organizations, obviously obvious scams like no labels. The scale of money being thrown at Republicans all the time. It is it is staggering. And against that amount of wealth being pushed, being used to push progressivism into the grave, it's very hard to make a stand when you're living off a tip jar yep. and hoping to make rent next month. Yeah. And that's just that's just reality. Well, and I, I feel very badly for the people who are uh, Capital One checking account customers yeah. today. Oh, God, yeah. uh, Capital One has a huge problem with their computers and people are not getting their direct deposits into their checking account for their pay, for their mm -hmm. pay stub, for actual, you know, the transfer of money from their employer to their bank account it didn't happen this morning. And uh, I feel for people like that. But just be aware that if we only get a paycheck here... <laughs> On the first mm -hmm. of the month <laughs> when people donate to this podcast. Yeah. That's it. Um, so, Drift Glass, I, I also yeah. hope that this No Labels event encourages Republican voters to vote yes. for Bill Weld in New Hampshire. I do, too. I, I look forward to uh, 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 Charlie Sykes and and Rick Wilson and uh, waking the Tom fuck Nichols, up and endorsing Bill uh, Weld, <laughs> heading off to, to New Hampshire yeah. to throw their considerable weight behind uh, their electoral genius because that's what they're they say right they're, right. they're electoral they geniuses it, yeah they're proud of their work yeah they, yeah they have never been able to answer the question how did a dumb shit like me who's in the middle of the cornfield with no contacts figure out their party was a party of bigots and imbeciles twenty years before they did yeah. Yeah. They've never been able to answer that question, but they have blocked me for asking it. So I know. <laughs> blocked you for asking it. Yes, they I have. I know. For, and, and then bragged about how, what internet tough guys there because either they take on people. I'm willing to get in the arena with anyone except for Drift Glass because he asked really scary questions. No, I, what you're willing to do is get in the arena with your gullible liberal friends who will promote your book and with the rest of the Beltway media who wants to believe that this all began in 2015. Yeah. And it, this is... I, I keep hearing people that I like and respect talking about history will not will not allow this. There will be an accounting. This is the last time. We're not going to – no more forgiveness, no more second chances. And I, I, I really – I so wish that to be true. I really do. I'm not cynical. I just remember that this is exactly what we said in 2007 and eight. It's exactly what we said. This is the, – the Bush administration is so bad, such a blight on history that there is no way – there is no way – People like Bill Crystal are going to get away with ever being put in front of a microphone again. They're so covered in blood. They've wrecked this country so thoroughly that Republicans are never going to be credible again. Two years later, there's a fucking Tea Party made up of ent almost entirely of ex-Republicans, and they're back in power. And that was entirely due to the mainstream media completely abdicating its responsibility to do fact-based reporting and instead saying, let's not hold anyone accountable for anything because if we start doing that, we're all going to be fired. And that's the name of that tune. Drew Class, I do want to do a shout out to one of our listeners who gave me hope. Uh, okay. and, and let me remind our listeners that Tuesday of next week is election day in a lot of places. And, uh, mm -hmm. In Mississippi, they're electing a governor. In Virginia, they're electing the entire state house, I believe. Um, uh -huh. 
the no, you know who the number one group spending money in Virginia is right now, Drift Glass? Uh, oh, I want it to be Act Blue. I want it to be um, Code Pink. It's I re- every town. I want it to be a liberal it's group. It's every town. It's the anti-gun oh, really? group from, yep, oh, the parents that lost their children at Sandy Hook. They are the number uh-huh. one spending, and they are building an infrastructure in Virginia to get gun laws passed in Virginia. And they're spending more money than anyone else. Um, I'm sad that it has to be who spends the most money that Uh gets our attention. Um, But I wanted to do a shout out to Joe, who wrote us a couple of weeks ago. Um, He sent us a picture of him with his family. And uh, I agree with him. He said I married way (laughs) above my station. There you go, Joe. There you go. That's he the way to a, do it, man. He has a he has a wife who is gorgeous, uh, and two beautiful children. Um, but he sent us this picture because it was the day when he and his wife uh, took their children to the polls in 2017, oh. and it was the day that he won his race for school board director. Yay! He defeated a Republican incumbent, and in 2018 he cast the deciding vote five to four to take their district from half day to full day kindergarten. And he said, you guys were in my ear every week for that election. Oh, that and wow. Makes you feel <laughs> that makes, I swear to God, there just you, made my day. There you go. So thank yeah, you for yeah. writing us, Joe. Thank you for running for office. Uh, thank you for the work you do. Uh, thanks to your wife for uh, all of her support of your work. Cause you can yeah. bet she, she does. Um, it, Everything makes a difference. We're just so proud of you and uh, hope everyone will follow in his footsteps. Oh, everyone wants to school board. And however you feel led to do so, uh, get out there and be active in your community. And there's a lot to do. Yeah. A lot. To, a yeah. lot of people out there, I, I, you know, it, it gets a little grim. Maybe my, you know, my personal situation right now might be weighing me down just a little bit. Oh, but, yeah. Well, uh, you hate ours, traveling it, and we're going to be a part in the f- week ahead and that's not no, fun yeah that's not fun but, but a friend of ours is raising money locally to to provide anti-racism training mm-hmm. yes for example. right and, and the fundraiser is going pretty well so and and she didn't have to do that she wants to do that it moves her deeply she's a member of our sunday school and so we do know people who are who are not rocked back on their heels right well and and let's say let's say a shout out to chuck and cheryl too it yeah. seems oh, yeah. like it seemed My like God. a year ago that we had lunch with them. I it know. was last Sunday. I know. <laughs> Podcast listeners from uh, Northern Illinois came down and took us out to lunch and were very generous yeah. with us. And we often find that we have a lot in common with our podcast listeners that come to yeah. visit us. But this was weird. Yeah. It was weird. They man. are United Methodists. They belong to a church that's almost exactly the same size as ours. Their Sunday school is the same. Their ser- church services are very similar. And uh, they are beside themselves uh, over what is happening to our church, which is that there's a core of right wingers who want LGBTQ people traditional values. pushed out of the church. Yeah, right. right. We're all talking about, well, what's the gay tax? You know, what do right. we have to contribute to make it so that we can have ministers who are gay? We can have gay weddings in our church and so right. forth. And we're going to leave if things aren't don't turn out the way they need yeah. to turn out. And a lot of no people are going to leave. Um but it's looking like the church is our church, the United Methodist Church, the worldwide United Methodist Church is going to split over this issue. Yes, they, and, they will. And, and we they, know what side should. we're on. And, yeah. you know, we're, we feel way behind the times. Uh, a lot of churches are way ahead of us on this issue. Yes, they are. Um, and it seems like such a slow walk to get to where we need to go. But within the next 12 to 15 months, this is just going to be over. And too bad, so sad. But if you don't believe in human rights for everyone and welcoming everyone into your church and welcoming everyone to get married in your church, uh, I don't want to be a part of that. We can't be a part of your church. Sorry. Yeah. But anyway, Chuck and Cheryl were awesome. And we hope we'll get to see them again. And uh, they were great. Um, Are you ready to do a news roundup? I am. I am. I'm anxious to do one. I'll just jump right in and say the judge is expected to reconsider where, whether an associate of Rudy Giuliani should remain on house arrest while he awaits trial for charges of illegally funneling money to a pro-Trump campaign election committee. Just this week in history, I'm sure it'll be the same next week and the week after that. It's not, it's not there's a smoking gun. There is a barge load 
of smoking guns being offloaded in public view every day. That it, it you know, it was the Republican Party reached a breaking point when they found out there was a tape. Yes, right. right. And oh my God, there's a tape. We can we can now prove it. We know either way. And and the president who we trust says one thing, and the crazy liberal Democrats say another. And let's figure it out. Um, there there has been a hundred equivalents of a tape so far. And, Absolutely. And the, and the Republican Party is now so depraved, so lobotomized that none of this affects them in any way. But we can see it with our own eyes that this this is over now. Yeah. The, the, the evidence of guilt is is overwhelming and uh, irrefutable. The question now becomes, um, where do we go from here? And that scares me just a little bit. Anyway, after you, Blue Gal. Okay. Donald Trump's personal racist Christopath. I like the way you put that. Paula White will now be officially in charge of overseeing a White House division, your taxpayer dollars at work, that conducts outreach to key parts of the president's, so-called president's, base. The uh, Iraq War veteran and Purple Heart recipient, aforementioned Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, told impeachment investigators during closed-door uh, deposition that he heard Trump ask Ukraine President Zelensky to investigate Joe Biden and his son as a favor, quote-unquote, after Zelensky brought up the defense cooperation between the U.S. and Ukraine. Vindman said he was so concerned by the call that Trump's request could be seen as a, quote, partisan play that could, quote, undermine U.S. national security, that he reported it to the NSC's lead counsel out of a sense of duty. And Vindman's sworn statement contradicted Gordon Sondland's testimony, who told House investigators that no one had raised concerns about Trump's actions. Vindman testified that he confronted Sondland, ambassador to the European Union, after Sondland Kurt Volker, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, and then National Security Advisor John Bolton met with senior Ukrainian officials at the White House about, quote, Ukraine delivering specific investigations in order to secure the meeting with the president, unquote. Vindman testified that he told Sondland, quote, that his statements were inappropriate, that the request to investigate Biden and his son had nothing to do with national security and that such investigations were not something the NSC was going to get involved in or push, unquote. The Fox News flying monkeys immediately began attacking Vindman's loyalty and integrity. Mm -hmm. 49% of Americans agree that Trump should be impeached and removed from office, while 47% disagree. The House approved a resolution to formally authorize and set ground rules for its impeachment inquiry into Trump. The resolution passed 232 to 196, almost entirely along party lines. The National Security Council's top Ukraine expert testified that a Devin Nunez associate misrepresented himself to Trump as the NSC's Ukraine expert. Lieutenant Colonel Vindman told lawmakers that Kashyap Patel circumvented NSC process to provide Trump with disinformation that Ukraine was corrupt and had interfered in the 2016 election on behalf of Democrats. And another top aide to Representative Devin Nunez has been trying to unmask the anonymous whistleblower at the heart of the House's impeachment inquiry by releasing information about him to conservative journalists and politicians. Trump's former top National Security Council advisor on Russia and Europe, Tim Morrison, corroborated testimony by the acting ambassador to Ukraine that Trump tried to withhold military assistance until Ukraine committed to investigating Trump's political rivals. According to the Daily Beast, Morrison possessed, possesses a hostility to negotiating negotiator restrictions on U.S. nuclear weapons that rival John Bolton's own, as well as an expertise on nuclear issues undisputed by even his harshest critics. Among arms controllers, Morrison's name is the equivalent of Kaiser Sose. A former State Department official called him the hard, hard linest of the hard line on nuclear policy. So John Bolton got his guy in. I'm telling you, when Bolton testifies on camera, I, I can't even. I can't. I don't, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> well, I, I love it when Republicans have a civil war. Because <laughs> Bolton has a real constituency out there among Zionists. Yep. I mean, rabid, rabid right wing Zionists and uh, among among hawks. Anyone who wants to blow up a lot so, of countries is a big John Bolton fan. 
and, and destroy the UN. Right. <laughs> All right. Remember Bob Livingston, disgraced Republican congressman uh, who presided over the House for about five minutes during the Clinton impeachment period after Gingrich was run out on a rail. And then it came out that Livingston had also had an affair and covered it up. Uh, and then the Republicans had Denny, Denny the molester Haster as their yeah, speaker. Nothing but quality on that side. Nothing but quality. Yeah, right. Well, you know, Denny Haster wasn't having an affair with a woman. No, he wasn't. That's <laughs> not his true. wife. So he, he qualified, right? Absolutely. <laughs> they went through to the third person to be speaker, right? Um, well... It turns out Bob Livingston, surprise, he's a lobbyist. And he's back in the news for repeatedly attempting to get the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine fired for her association with Democrats. Livingston told Ukraine specialist Catherine Croft on multiple occasions that Marie Ivanovich, the American ambassador to Ukraine, was an Obama holdover associated with George Soros, and she should be fired. Yeah. The Deputy White House Counsel moved the transcript of Trump's July 25th call with Zelensky to the highly classified server after Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman raised concerns about Trump's behavior. They tried to bury the evidence. They cover up. 61% of Americans say Trump has little or no respect for the country's democratic institutions and traditions. Mm -hmm. 42% of Americans approve of Trump's job performance. Yeah, we know those people. Wow. Rudy Giuliani needed an Apple genius to unlock his iPhone after he was named Trump's cybersecurity advisor in 2017. Apparently, Giuliani locked, was locked out from his iPhone because he'd forgotten the passcode and entered the wrong one at least 10 times. Is it Carrick? Is it Carrick? Is it spelled Carrick? Kirik with a Q? I forget. It's been a long time since I was America's mayor. Oh, my yeah. God. And and the fact that he went to the Apple store to get it fixed is just after being announced that he was going to serve in the White House. I mean, Vlad has been listening nonstop, 24-7, 365. Well, and, and then being told by actual cybersecurity experts, and I believe some of the Apple store, but I'm not sure, why are you giving your secure phone full of secrets to some fucking employee of an Apple store? Right. I, uh, I, cause I'm an idiot. Cause I'm really, cause I can't, I'm locked out. Yeah. Yeah. The Trump environmental protection administration is scheduled to weaken regulation that limits heavy metals like arsenic, lead and mercury from coal fired power plants. The changes take place this month. And speaking of poisoning the groundwater on purpose, the American Bar Association has deemed Trump's new judicial nominee not qualified for a spot on the U.S. Court of Appeals in the Ninth District. The ABA found Lawrence Van Dyke to be, quote, arrogant, lazy, an ideologue, and lacking the knowledge of the day-to-day -day practice of the law. And just so you don't think that the ABA is just doing this based on being liberals and Democrats yeah. and so forth, and they just hate all Trump appointees. Uh, I read their entire letter about this loser, and uh, they based their assessment on interviews with 60 people who have personally worked with Lawrence Van Dyke one-on-one -on, -one on legal yeah. cases. Now, will he be? So this is talking to 60 lawyers or 60 judges, lawyers and judges, a combination, who have personally worked with this guy. And he's an arrogant asshole who doesn't know the now, law. Will he be appointed to the Ninth District Circuit? Will he be oh, confirmed by the Senate? Because that's why Mitch McConnell exists. Mitch McConnell has passed nothing. There are 400 bills Democrats have passed covering everything you could imagine from uh, credit, uh, credit and debit to uh, environment to health care to gun control to you, you name it. You name the subject. Democrats have passed one, two or five bills to try to address it. And the normal process in a normal government is the Senate does something and they reconcile it or there's a, they declare themselves to be irreconcilable. They go back to the table. Instead, Mitch McConnell has spent the last three years just killing them, just snuffing them out as if they weren't there. They're not there at all. And, and all of this is on Mitch McConnell. If there's a greater traitor to this country than Donald Trump, it's Mitch McConnell. I think that's yep. true. Wake up, Wilbur Ross, wake up. Oh, so is there money? Is there money involved? Yeah. Yeah. 
The National Archives is investigating Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross's use of private email for official business. Wow. You mean but his emails? I'm so old. I remember when that used to be something you get locked up for. Lock her up. Yeah. White, the White House press secretary, who refuses to hold White House press briefings, Stephanie Grisham, agreed last week with Donald Trump that those against him are, quote unquote, human scum. Oh. And there's a good article at Media Matters uh, today, we're recording on Friday, huh? about how Stephanie Grisham has moved the entire base of operations for the White House press office to Fox News. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. And why don't you read our local news, Drift Glass? Yeah. Well, it's kind of important. Today, Ash Street opens or reopens. Theoretically, I drove past there earlier and they still weren't open. They're supposed to be ribbon cutting. They're supposed to be great. This is a uh, large improvement project. It's been going on for two years to accommodate railroad tracks and make crosstown traffic much easier. Um, but it's infrastructure week here in Springfield. And under Democratic leadership, the multi-billion dollar infrastructure improvement bill uh, for the entire state of Illinois is now moving forward at great guns. And 30 million of that is for a long delayed improvement to MacArthur Boulevard, which is very near where we live. In fact, well, I, I, Ash, the Ash Street is about 10 blocks uh, east of us. Yep. And uh, MacArthur Boulevard is about six blocks west of us. Yeah. And Mac so well, MacArthur Boulevard <laughs> is actually technically a state highway. Right. Uh, but it used to be apparently long before we were here, a, a very prestigious like State Street. A lot of businesses, mm -hmm. well tended. It's now busted up. The curbs are rotting. The sewers are falling apart. The sidewalks are a rubble. People uh, who, who were uh, challenged uh, transportation wise or in wheelchairs can't really walk across the street. It's very bad. It's been very bad for a long time. And the reason MacArthur Boulevard got that is because of the Neighborhood Association. And because we have a Democratic governor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The reason that money was directed to this particular and much needed project is because the MacArthur Boulevard Association, which I'm a member of, is a very strong, active, um, left-leaning, grassroots neighborhood association. Uh, the aldermen always show up at meetings because they feel they must, and that's righteous. The cop shows up. Our beat cop shows up and tells us what's going on in the neighborhood. We have someone from the county show up. It is a well-respected organization. And, and you've made really significant improvements in the quality of life yes, absolutely. of people who shop, live, and work around MacArthur Boulevard. Absolutely. Yep. And that doesn't happen without local political involvement. The reason this is going in is because the local political involvement of people who volunteer for organizations like that, it is that simple. We, and uh, Drift Glass is a millionaire without the money. He just shows up a... and volunteers for all these civic organizations. Sure, whatever you want, see? And <laughs> we do have some fairly um, prestigious people who volunteer for uh, the MacArthur Boulevard Association uh, well, who are associated with or married to, like like a senator from Illinois. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Durbin is a great Mrs. lady. Durbin. Yes, she and, is. Uh, but these are people who roll up their sleeves and volunteer to clean the streets. Um, That's the know, thing. They're out picking up garbage on the si on the sidewalks. You you go with them. I and do. do a I, Saturday I cleanup with the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the yeah. the uh, MacArthur Boulevard Association is there and and people show up and wear glowing vests and so yes. forth and, and pick up the sidewalk, clean up and, the sidewalk. Yeah. Last time I was there, there was an alderman there who brought donuts and oh, isn't it, that nice? Yeah. So it's it really is. It's it's so simple, but. Politics 101. This is a powerful uh, neighborhood organization that got organized years ago, stays active, has an active board, is, is deeply involved and addressed and goes to city council yeah. meetings and talks to city council and lets our well, And then when it's up. time to actually put some money down to improve something and people yeah. say MacArthur Boulevard, there's already a history. This is what you were talking about, yeah. about political infrastructure Absolutely. in addition to physical infrastructure. Legislators here. Oh, MacArthur Boulevard needs repair. Oh, I know all those people. I know yeah. people that work and live and uh, improve and have been working on MacArthur Boulevard for decades. Yeah. So then the money comes, and that's yeah. fantastic. I'm not looking forward to all the traffic delays no. that come from the <laughs> IDOT no. moving into no. MacArthur Boulevard. Having Ash Street closed for two and a half years has been inconvenience enough, but uh, I am grateful. Uh, that we're going to have improvements made to, to the street. That's true. And All something right. you can see and touch, you know, it's something you can actually yeah. point to. And, say, and you can that. point to and say, we're, we're making things better. Absolutely. Yeah.
Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Eartha Kitty. Oh, come on. Come Eartha on. Kitty is the perfect Halloween week kitty and is also clearly a cousin of our own all black cats. Barack Hussein, the Kenyan usurper and Olive, the parkour kitty say hello to Eartha Kitty. Yeah. We also want to do a shout out to uh, the most famous cat of the week, Cinderblock on the treadmill. Yep. Yep. Uh, good luck, Cinderblock on your weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. But remember whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor or walk on the water treadmill and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Eartha Kitty at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And if you've had a paycheck this weekend, remember, we don't have a paycheck unless you contribute to this podcast. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We've got PayPal, postal address information, Patreon, etc., etc. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Oh, one little announcement, Adrian. one quick announcement. Yeah. Uh, we were scheduled to be on the House Sparks radio show tomorrow. That has yes. been postponed for a week due to my unavoidable travel schedule. Just FYI. Yes, and, and we do wish your mom well, you. and I do not, I want to make it clear, I don't resent you going to see no. your mom. I love your mom. She's amazing. <laughs> She's amazing. It's just She's amazing, and she hard. needs to get better. Being a part is hard. We love her. Yeah, so big hug for her, and uh, safe travels for you. Yeah. And everybody out there, give, uh, give your good thoughts to Drift Glass's mom. She's a great gal. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, one of the Internet Kitties is actually on tour today, visiting Middle Child's school, and the other kitty is very, very jealous. This is this is our cinder block. Yeah. <laughs> our cinder block is... Uh, uh, Big cat. Going to, a, going to a seminar on pet obesity right. at Middle Child's Middle Child, school. Middle uh, Child did a speech on, on pet obesity and... and so forth and needed a visual aid rather than put, hold up the video of cinder block on her phone she decided to take our actual cat okay, barack too. hussein the kenyan you and we we were dead set against it until last week we were when hal spark stuck his big bazoo in and said <laughs> sure after we recorded we we still had hal sparks on the line and middle child got to talk to hal sparks uh-huh. star of lab rats yes you know, on the Disney Channel, Big deal. Yeah. and uh, he he weighed in and said, "Yes, he thought that uh, our obese cat should be uh, permitted to go to school." And that was so. It. Today he went. Today so, he went know, to school. That's that's years of parenting just up in smoke. Thanks to Hell's down the drain. Thanks, Hell thanks, Sparks. Hal. Thanks a lot. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.